Hey families, I'm going to go over our schedule for remote learning and just kind of talk a little bit about what the changes look like so that you're aware of them and that you can kind of think about them and plan for them. I don't think it's going to be anything that you're too um, surprised by. So I will attach our, a schedule to this um, video at the bottom after. And then also I just kind of want to go over some changes that I made and why. Basically, the changes I made were based on the feedback that I got from almost every parent, and that was that remote learning had way too much. Our phase one had way too much screen time, which I could not agree with you more. Um, at the time, I didn't really feel like they were ready to be let go and just kind of go independently and work on their own. I feel like they are now. We've done a really good job of helping these guys become independent. When I say we, I mean you and me. We've both done this together. And um, working in the classroom, they're independent. Um, they're feeling more confident about just taking a risk and going for it. And so I really want to kind of capitalize on their hard work. It's not fair to say, yeah, I know you can work independent, but you're going to hang out with me all day. They don't want to do that, and I don't want them to do that. So here's how our schedule is a little different. When you see it, you will notice that it's color coded like I did last time. Gray are the times that we need to be whole group. And those are the times that I'm going to be teaching big standards that I have to have them know. Um, I'll review them with them in small groups, but those gray areas are the ones where I really need them to be with me. Purple are going to be our independent work times, okay? And they are a little chunky, but I'll tell you why in one second. And when I say independent work time, I literally mean kids are able to log off, do the literacy stuff that I'm going to give them. I'm going to coach them on it. We'll train on it. They'll figure it out. They're going to do that independently. I will call them when it's their time to meet with me for small group reading. And then um, if they have wind times, when they go at that 9.45 to 10.15 time, their wind teachers will call them out for that too. So there won't be a whole lot of like, oh my gosh, what time is it? I have to log back on other than when they need to come back on. So I leave like a five minute buffer here. I put that in there because I feel like that's probably a good amount of time for people to kind of remember, regather. I might need to call a few kids back to bring them back. We'll have our specials time. I built in a 15 minute recess because we did 10 minutes last time and it was good. And I don't know, maybe we'll have to go back to 10. We'll just have to see how it goes, but they're used to about a 15 minute break and I think it's okay to keep that for now. And then we'll go and finish up one more reading group, which is one more 15 minute block of independent time. And then we will finish up our day with math. You'll notice our lunch time is at the same time. And then we'll still end our day with an end of day meeting at 1245. I know that seems like a really kind of silly time for us to log back in together, but it's going to give me time to um, kind of let them know what their afternoon looks like. I would really like to start some small group math groups really almost right away. So um, you won't see them that Monday and Tuesday next week, but probably the very following week, I'll start letting kids know, hey, I'm going to call you at one o'clock or I'm going to have you stay on with me and we're going to just do quick small group math. So the other thing you will see in their binder is, of course, I made that awesome checklist that will be very shortly coming out of their binder. But that was another piece of feedback that I got from you guys was that um, the kids really need some sort of like tangible checklist to check things off and say, yep, I got that done. So this is what I did. It looks a little crazy, but I think once you look at it, the kids will understand it and so will you. Um, green up here. So what I'm gonna be doing is giving them a board on Seesaw. And I know that some people are like, eh, Seesaw. But you have to understand that is my only way to communicate with them. It is my only way to give them instruction without sitting right in front of them. I hardly ever use Seesaw in that way when I'm in the classroom. But because I have to, I can't sit with them, I can't whole group instruct in this way, Seesaw is going to be my lifeline so that they can work independently. So I will coach them on it. I will train them on it. I'll even post some videos so that you know what it looks like. And that way we all should be good on it. But this is what their checklist will look like. It'll be in their binder. And basically when I say, okay guys, it's literacy time. I'm gonna have you log off, go work on whatever it is you need to do. Then they have these things. They have kind of a checklist here they have to go through. So it says choose two to three each day and then check the Seesaw board. So the very first thing they're gonna do is go to Seesaw. I have a board for them. Then they're gonna say, okay, I think today I'm gonna to do my word work. Click on the word work thing and they'll say, okay, in your binder, grab this page, do word work. Okay, it'll tell them I'll be there. It's almost like I'm sitting next to them telling them exactly what to do. Journal entry. 
Um, they're going to click on the window and a journal entry. I'll pop up and say, hey, here's your journal entry for the day. I'd like you to write about blah, blah, blah. Okay. So everything on that board will sort of, sort of be linked to either a video of me or something telling them exactly what to do. Once they get it done, they put a little check mark and they know that that's done. Monday and Tuesday, the board is going to stay the same. Okay. And that just means at one of those 15 minute blocks during the day, you know, when I showed you that schedule, I'm going to be calling them into a reading group. So they're not going to get a chance to do all of these in one day. They're going to have to do a little bit one day and a little bit the next day. Okay. So again, I'm going to coach them on it, but this is going to be their checklist. They'll have the same thing, a checklist on Wednesday, Thursday, same kind of idea. Check it off as we go. There's maybe one thing that's different on there, but it's okay. They're, it's not different to them. It'll just look different to you. On the bottom here is going to be my reading group schedule. So I will let kids know what color group they are. I'll let you know what color group they are. And they are just going to have to just know I'm going to call them. They don't have to log back on. They don't have to come find me. I'm going to actually say, okay, it is 925. I'm going to call everyone in my purple group and we're all going to meet together. Okay. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that you might want to know. I know that I have probably a handful of kids, kids out there that I've either talked to parents about or I know that working independently is going to be really tricky for them. Getting this done in sort of an independent way is just, they're just not there yet. So I have two solutions for that. One of them is I think I sent out a, me a message on Sunday. I would really love to have a parent that just says, hey, I can man a room. Basically, I'm just going to leave you in our main classroom with four or five kids, and if they need your help, they're going to say, hey, Mrs. Jones, can I get a little help? This is where I'm stuck. Mrs. Jones is going to be like, sure, I got this. I can tell you exactly what to do. Off they go. Um, I would still be able to hear you in case you needed help, and actually that's kind of like the district's way of saying I have to sort of be around to help supervise that, but I just felt like that might be an easier way to allow some of those kids that need a little bit extra not to have me sitting with them. And I really, really, really want to spend those 15 minute chunks with my reading groups simply doing reading with those kids. My other solution would be I will go ahead and leave those five kids in my main group and I'll just kind of help them as they need it and see how it goes. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, the afternoon, uh, around one o'clock, I'm going to start pulling small math groups. And I did not do that in that first um, round one of phase one. I just wasn't ready. I didn't really know what they didn't know. Um, honestly, I was just keeping my head above water. I feel like now I have a little more good, I have. I feel a little better about what this is gonna look like and how I can make it work. So I would probably start pulling those um, math groups pretty quickly and I will let kids know. My thought is I'm gonna do half the class on one day and half the class on the other day, but I haven't quite solidified that in my brain yet. So, hopefully that's as clear as mud as usual. You know, that is our name this year. Our middle name is Pivot and just <laughs> change gears and start something new. Just so you're aware, everything that they need is in here. It says, where is this? Well, whatever paper you're gonna need for word work is in your purple section. Whatever paper you're gonna need for your journal is in your purple journal. Whatever paper you need for listen and respond, which they've done a million times this year, is in your green section. So. That binder is going to be sort of their, their day. We're going to use a lot of stuff from that binder. That's going to be sort of like, well, we know the binder now. I am not taking it away because it's something that they feel good about. They understand it. I think parents and everybody are still finally sort of on board with it, so I don't want to take that away. One last thing would be um, I will be sending home materials the next couple days, um, probably in a big Ziploc bag. Please, please find a nice home for it. The worst thing that could happen to these kids is, you know, we start teaching on Monday or Tuesday or even the following week after break. And I say, hey, pull out your yellow folder and find your Alcona boxes. And they're going to be like, I don't even know where that is. So please help them to kind of start and reorganize their own learning area, just like they did before. If you want those bins back, I have a couple left that kids turned in that didn't want them. So um, if you don't have your bin at home still, let me know and I will see if I can scrounge them up. I'll scrounge a few up if you'd like to use those to organize and I can send those home with them on Wednesday and Thursday. So um, the only thing I'll ask you to be watching for is I will do a quick like screencast tutorial on what how to use Seesaw for, for the literacy part of this. 
trust me, your kids are going to know more than you will about it. But I know that I have a lot of parents that are like, eh, I feel like I need to know. So I just want to send that to you in case you would like to know what that's going to look like and how to navigate that. Other than that, if you have questions, please um, email me, call me, whatever. I will hopefully have answers for you. But again, um, this is just a little bit of a shift from before, but I think that this is the shift we need to take because our kids are growing and they're ready to do a little bit different work. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks for your support and um, let me know if you have any questions.